Hello and welcome everyone. We have a great show for you today. My name is Alejandra. And my name is Joey. We are looking forward to bringing you the best news from our campus. This is EPCC News. Stay tuned. Looking to become more than just an everyday college student? Next up, we are going to show you how you can join the student leadership to help benefit you with your career and your future. Here's Erica Rubio with more. Hello everyone, my name is Erica Rubio and today's topic is student leadership in campus life. And here is RBC Jones with more information. Okay. Within this department, we have intramural sports, we have student leadership, we have campus life, we have clubs and organizations, we have the Veterans Resource Center, we have the Student Union, and so those are all different areas within the Department of Student Leadership and Campus. So I put a proposal together about eight years ago, submitted it to the Tuition and Fees Committee to establish student unions on each one of our campuses every three years, as well as enhance the programs that are offered through Campus Life. And we're about to open our second student union at the Trans Mountain Campus in February of 2017. And then every three years after that, hopefully we'll open up the next student union. It gives them alternatives to just being in the cafeteria or in the hallways. The student unions themselves have gaming areas primarily in there where students can go and they can game, um, play video games, they can play foosball and air hockey and pool and things like that. So it gives them a place where they can go and relax, just like they're at home, if you were at home and you were playing your video games, you know, that that's a place for them to do. The Trans Mountain Student Union is opening up. It's going to have the same areas, except we have another area that we're calling our Lady Zone, because what we found is that 90% of the patrons in our student union are males, and so we're trying to find a way in which to pull in the females. So we're having one area at Trans Mountain where they can come in, and I said there's a flat screen TV and they can watch Oprah, you know, the stuff that the guys may not want to do you know, and they can eat in that particular area and that's hopefully will draw our female population into our student unions as well. And also our Student Government Association. They are the voice of the students and they advocate for students' rights and change they like to see on the campuses. So student government has been doing that as well. Another thing they another thing that student government is looking at is the smoking pot. Because we're looking to create a better environment and a healthier environment for all of our students. And we know that secondhand smoke is not good, you know. So that is something that student government is looking at. It's still in the process of hopefully being approved as a college policy and hopefully we'll have implementation this fall semester to make El Paso Community College a smoke free tobacco free campus. So come and join us as student leadership and be part of something great. Become more than just a student. Become a student leader. Visit our student leadership website and fill out our application. In El Paso Community College, security with vehicles and parking regulation is something very important for the staff and the students that are enrolled every semester in the school. Amarani Pernado has a special report of the traffic office that APCC has. Hi everyone, I'm here at El Paso Community College Valle Verde Campus parking lot because EPCC welcomes everyone. They offer assigned parking spot for each vehicle. I work here at the EPCC College Traffic Office. I enforce outside as well as I help students inside with uh, citations and buying your decals. If you have a citation, you guys can come in the office. We can help you the best we can. And that's where you pick up your decals. It's $15 a semester, 25 school year, meaning August to August. Uh, citations per day, we would give out five whole books, which contain almost 50 tickets in each. The expiration dates are on the bottom of each permit. That'll tell you uh, when they expire. El Paso Community College requires all students' vehicles parking in college parking lots and garages to display a valid parking permit. We give out tickets for no parking permits for expired parking permits, for uh, visitor parking, faculty parking. Pretty much we can give tickets for anything, but mainly those are the top three that we give for. I fill out about almost 100 tickets a day during my time period of working. 
And then there might be another enforcer coming in the afternoon, so it depends on how much they'll do also. I mainly go to this side of the lots. I go to each parking lot and I'll give tickets there and then other officers will go to different ones. So it just depends on the office. The Traffic and Parking Regulations Office requires all students and staff to remove all prior EPCC parking permits. Use EPCC parking permits for vehicles registered with EPCC police only. Be considerate of others while driving and buckle up. Don't forget to follow the rules. Don't park in yellow or striped zones, fire lines or reserve areas. Don't tape or improperly affix the parking permit. Don't issue disabled parking. Don't use a previous citation and don't park in front of residential homes. The staff of EPCC Traffic and Parking Regulations, among why the EPCC Police Department welcomes all students, faculty, staff, and employees of Benders to El Paso Community College. It is their intention to promote safety, therefore, they provide these regulations concerning all vehicles driving and parked on any EPCC district. If you guys have any questions, we are located in the SSC building downstairs to help you guys with either your decals or your tickets. For EPCC TV, I am Amairani Peinal. Well, it seems that if we don't respect the regulations that EPCC has, we can have several consequences. Thank you so much, Amairani, for giving to us this important information. Today's segment is on the Dakota Access Pipeline and how we can stop it from expanding. The pipeline is 30 inches in diameter, and if not stopped, the pipeline could bust. We could work together and try to stop the pipeline from busting. Hi, I'm Andrea Baez, and I'm here at Escarate Park to talk about the Dakota Access Pipeline and what we can do to help solve the issue. The Dakota Access Pipeline is a 30-inch diameter pipeline that connects the rapidly expanding back in and three forks production areas in North Dakota to Patoka, Illinois. I'm here with Samantha. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. What can we do to help stop this issue from happening? I believe we can um, sign petitions for those who are not in agreement with the Dakota pipeline. That's what we can do to help stop the pipeline from actually being made. How can we get the people in North Dakota and Patoka, Illinois to safety? Right now, actually, they're um, isn't a reason for them to feel unsafe, but if for any reason that they feel unsafe, we can definitely take some measures and precautions, and of course the city can, uh, and the community can definitely do some stuff that can put us in safety. I'm here with Beth Baeza. How are you doing, Ms. Baeza? I'm good, thanks for asking. Pipeline is expanding quickly. What can we do to help solve the issue? I think we should sit down with the tribe and discuss any solutions we could have. That way in the future we wouldn't have any differences. How can we make the oil from the pipeline not burst from the pipeline so it does not ruin any homes, farms, and etc.? We should build double wall pipelines to ensure the safety of the economy and the people who live in North Dakota. Thank you for your time. For EPCC TV, I'm Andrea Baez. For more information on the Dakota Access Pipeline, visit DAPLPipelineFacts.com. What is the meaning of life? The following story isn't about philosophy, but about biology and the EPCC club that is down to earth. If you have a curious mind, this is the club for you. Today, I will be interviewing the advisor for the biology club. My name is Paul Hodgkin and I'm the advisor of the Biology Club. Uh, I teach biology here at Via Verde. And what the Biology Club is, is it's a group of students that they all have in common an interest in biology. So they're interested in going into biological careers, or they just think biology is fun, or they were looking for a club and they just think biology would be a fun club because of the kinds of activities that we do. The Biology Club is involved in a lot of community service. So they take donations for Pet Guardian Angel. 
We take donations uh, for the children's hospital. They also do gardening. They have their own garden plot. We oftentimes uh, help with Earth Day when it comes to campus on April. They also have an aquaponics unit that they help with. Aquaponics is a technology that involves fish uh, swimming in a pool. Uh, you feed the fish and as the fish produce waste after eating their food, you pump the water up into a grow bed and plants take that wastewater as nourishment and you can actually grow quite a few vegetables that way. So between the garden and the aquaponics unit, the students get a chance to do a lot of hands-on uh, work. Okay, biologists in the biology club have in the past done fall festival. They have taken trips, so they go on hikes. Uh, two or three times a year we do hikes. And they pretty much on a weekly basis meet in the Via Verde garden. And they garden, they work with uh, things that are down in the garden, but they also have their meetings where they take minutes and they vote and they decide what they're going to do. The two aquaponic systems are located at the Valle Verde Amphitheater Garden, which the biology club takes care of. A lot of the activities on a weekly basis are fundraising. So many of these events like Fall Festival, they're involved in gathering funds for the club. And the club has a dream one day of being able to go and take like a trip, a faraway place like Costa Rica or something with, with funding that they were able to raise. The kinds of events that the biology club have been involved in that were really hits are hikes, the gardening, I think we're the only club that has a a garden plot, and Earth Day, when we give away plants, we give away information. If you're interested in coming to the Biology Club, or joining, or learning more about it, come to one of our meetings. We meet in the fall of 2016 in the VV Garden, that's the amphitheater garden in the A building, at 11 a.m. every Friday. And we would love to meet you and talk to you more about what we do. This has been Luis Diego for EPC TV. Who knew that the Biology Club had a garden on campus? You learn something new every day. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that our lives begin and end the day we become silent about things that matter. Jacqueline Mata has a special report on how we can shape tomorrow by voting today. Are you a U.S. citizen, 18 or older? live in a county in the state of Texas and not a convicted felon? If you answered yes, then congratulations. You are eligible to vote in the state of Texas. Today, I'm going all over the campus of El Paso Community College, Valle Verde, and asking the students if they're registered to vote. And if not, I'm going to show them how to do it. Um, well, I'm, re I'm registered to vote, and I'm really glad about it. <laughs> I am registered to vote. Um... I'm actually kind of interested to see what my options are, especially knowing on how this election is really, really narrow on options here. Um, but yeah, I am registered to vote and I'm excited to actually do it for the first time um, ever. Well, I'm not registered to vote, but I would like to know how to get registered to vote. If you live in the state of Texas, registering to vote is super easy. You can do it online. All you need are the last four numbers of your social security number, a Texas issued ID, your date of birth, and you should be done. Here's the link where you can go and register at votetexas.gov. Want to register in person? Don't worry. Voter registration applications are available at all U.S. post office, public libraries, Texas Health and Human Services Commission, and any local high school. On 2008, 57.1% of the voting age population cast ballot, which is in the highest voter turnout in four decades. Yet there were still 6 million Americans who weren't registered to vote. 
I hope you all understand that you have the power to shape our country's course. People will be elected to take our values and opinions to turn them into laws, and we get to hire them. So don't take that for granted. All elections are important. Local elections, primary elections, midterm elections, presidential elections. Don't forget to register and vote for every single election. For APCC TV, I'm Jacqueline Mata. A free and fair election is not only about the freedom to vote, but the knowledge of how to cast a vote, but also about the participation process. Remember that your vote is your voice. At El Paso Community College, there's constant music in the cafeteria building. Do you ever take the time to realize who play it? Well, your music and house come from APCC Radio, and they get the opportunity to talk to tones of local artists, such as Hot Shot Kicks. Let's see what their music is about. EBC, what is up, it's your girl, C Money, this is Pulse Radio, bringing the heartbeat to hit music, and I was daily ants, and I'm in the booth today, I have Hot Shot Kicks, say what's up, guys. How's it going? I'm Josh, I play guitar and bass for Hot Shot Kicks. And I am Juan Villalobos, I also play guitar and bass, and in addition, I also do lead vocals. I'm Daniel Paulus, I am the drummer from Hot Shot Kicks, and occasionally I sing, but just hear me bringing the beats. Alright, we get distracted. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, Josh and I uh, started working on this song when uh, we were just out of college actually, a couple of years, like a year and a half ago or so. And we actually developed the riffs for that song in Arizona with you know, some vocal lines and bass lines. And then when we came out here, we showed them to Lorenzo and Daniel and we put the song together and solidified it. Each of you kind of picked a bit of other tracks for yourselves, mm -hmm. right? So do they imitate your personalities, what you're into, or how does that? How did you guys decide to choose the artists that you chose? Well, for me, I came a lot from the uh, progressive rock, classic rock background from my dad, especially. Um, but all of us kind of take inspiration from a lot of different artists, a lot of different songs. Um, Lorenzo, who's not here right now, he picked some really cool um, songs. Uh, he's got a St. Vincent track, he's got a Sampa from Twin Peaks uh, from the, the show, and that's coming up later too. Uh, but we all take inspiration from a lot of different genres, but all the same too. Like we all like progressive metal, we all like jazz, we all like electronic, we all like classic rock. So then, when did you figure out this is a terrible name? Let's move on. Or when did you decide to transition from that name to Hot Shot Kicks? Well, the, the first two flyers for shows that we played under the name Ignominous Dross. Ignominous. Um, they, yeah, they, they, they spelled it wrong. Um, so we're just like, okay, maybe we should choose something that's easier to spell. You think it was like a sign? Yeah, it's just like, maybe this won't work out. <laughs> and it, I don't know, just hearing the words Ignominous Dross, it, at least it made me think of more of like a metal band or Definitely. something like that. Um, like, I, I immediately think of like Deathcore, to be honest. Yeah, and we, we wanted something that was uh, a more all-encompassing name. Okay. Rather than making you think of a certain genre. Cool, and then you came up with Hot Shot Kicks. Yeah. Cool, so then what brought up Hot Shot Kicks? Same, same ideal? <laughs> no, that was uh, a name that I had come up with prior to moving out to El Paso. Um, and this was still when Josh and I were brainstorming the whole idea of starting a band because when we finished college, that's what we told ourselves, like, yo, we're going to go start a band, um, let's see what we can do. And so I just started writing down random names that came to my mind. And the words Hot Shot Kicks seemed random enough to where they wouldn't really mean anything, but they would be cool enough to really be a name. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, maybe this could be cool. And I... um, we're playing the... Heroes, Monsters, and Villains Rock Fest uh, on October 22nd. Cool. Daniel, you want to tell more about that? Yeah, okay, so like you said, October 22nd. The tickets are on sale right now. They are uh, $10. Um, you can catch a lot of great bands. You can catch bands like Coyote Blue, Frenzy, Memoria, uh, Foxy Mojo, Fox Vendetta, and there's plenty of other great local bands, but the main band, the main attraction is Aranda. They're going to be playing for the last band of the night. So if you want to come out and, you know, catch us there, catch a lot of great bands, I definitely recommend that. October 22nd at the El Paso County Coliseum. 
So okay. I'm C Money. I'm Daniel. I'm Juan. I'm Josh. And they are Hot Shot Cake. Thank you so much to Hot Shot Cakes for letting Pulse Radio in on their music. Pulse Radio has energetic houses that bring you the best music and interesting topics. So make sure you support your college radio. Tonight in Cinema Reviews, we will be taking a look at some of the most suspenseful, terrifying, and not so terrifying Mexican horror movies that have vampires, werewolves, Aztec mummies, dangerous deals with death, and even masked wrestlers. Mexican cinema has it all. Here are the five Mexican horror movies we highly recommend for this Halloween. Good evening. Welcome to Cinema Reviews. Tonight, we'll take a look at some of the most suspenseful, terrifying, and not so terrifying Mexican horror movies of all time. These movies have werewolves, vampires, Aztec mummies, danger streets with dead, and even masked wrestlers. Mexican cinema has it all, and even more. Here's three Mexican horror movies I highly recommend. Macario. Even though it's not exactly a horror movie, it creates suspense in the same way as horror movies does. The movie is about Macario, a poor indigenous lumberjack that shares his meal with cheese and roasted turkey with a mysterious thin individual that is dead himself. After they finish their meal, Dad gives Macario an unusual gift. This movie is Mexican storytelling at its finest. Entagua Macario es capaz de curar cualquier enfermedad. Siempre que yo no tengo una razón para oponerme a la salud del enfermo, te la doy y piensa que ningún hombre ha sido dueño del poder que deposito en tus manos. Cuidado como lo uses. Great performances, marvelous cinematography, and of course, a story full of wisdom. As a fun fact, this was the first Mexican movie to be nominated for an Academy Award. And the fine five films nominated are from Mexico, Macario by Plaza Films Mundiale. Veneno para las hadas. Now let's check a classy horror Mexican film. Poison from the Fairies was directed by Carlos Enrique Taboada, who is well known for giving nightmares to the Mexican audience with his horror anthology, which include films such as Hasta el Viento Tiene Miedo, El Libro de Piedra, Más Negro Que La Noche, and of course, Veneno para las Hadas. The story of the movie is difficult to describe without getting any spoilers. The only thing that I can say about this movie is that it has witches, magic, and mystery. With a great score, creative special effects, and an amazing ending. I highly recommend it. Kronos. Last but not least, we have Guillermo del Toro's first feature film. This movie is a mix between fantasy and horror and suspense. The story is about a mysterious device designed to provide its owner with eternal life that gets found by an old antique dealer named Jesus Gris. The device then suddenly inferred spider-like legs that grip Jesus' hand tightly and inserts a needle into his skin that gives him strange vampire powers, such as tears of blood, sexual appetite, and of course, our tenor life. At the same time in the story, a rich dying man finds out the location of the device and sends his nephew, played by Ron Perman, to get the device. Even though this movie has typical horror movie scenes, it's shot in a very poetic and gothic way. It sure is one of the best Mexican movies ever made. Because not everything in Halloween has to be serial killers with masks. Thank you for joining me for tonight's edition of Cinema Reviews. Hope to see you next week with more reviews, facts, and news. Thank you very much. I'm your host, Luis Gamboa. Not everything in Halloween has to be serial killers with masks. Thank you, Luis, for the special edition of Cinema Reviews. Thinking about getting the new iPhone 7? On this week's tech report, we take a look at all the new features and hardware to see if the new iPhone is worth upgrading. 
On September 16th, 2016, Apple launched its new Apple iPhone 7, boasting many new features, but lacking a headphone jack. This caused a lot of controversy with consumers. Let's see what people think of the new iPhone, as well as some of the new features, and if they're still going to buy it after the loss of a headphone jack. Hi with EPCC News, I'm Joey, I'm here with... Pedro Rubio. So is the lack of a headphone jack a big issue for you on the iPhone, on the iPhone 7? It is, but I consider it a worthy sacrifice. I, I like the fact that I can use any headphones on the phone, like on the iPhone 6 that I have. Uh, and the iPhone 7, of course, you're limited to the Bluetooth buds or the headphones that are going to have the same entry as a charger. But with what I've seen, I'd say it's, a, it's an okay sacrifice. Okay. Is there any new features that you're excited for for the iPhone 7? Uh, I'm glad that they made a memory upgrade. Uh, I wish that we could have an external memory, mm -hmm. like the Samsung's, be able to plug in a card for more memory. However, I'm sure that they're probably not going to do that. Uh, I am hoping that the camera resolution is way better than its predecessor, because I know... Well, what I'm really looking forward to is that the camera can take good picture and video at night. Mm -hmm. Because I know iPhone has a real bad tendency of uh, the video becoming too dark at night. Okay, thank you so much. All right, let's take a look at some of the new features of the new iPhone 7. It comes in a jet black and black color option. It has a solid state faster home button. It's water resistant. It has two dual rear cameras, perfect for taking videos. A 7 megapixel front camera, perfect for selfies. A quad core fusion chip, making it two times faster than the iPhone 6 dual stereo speakers, and a longer battery life, supposedly living up to two hours longer than the iPhone 6. Before I let you go, the video you're seeing right now was recorded with an iPhone 7. So what do you think? Is the video worth it, or do you miss the headphone jack? Let us know. Back to you in the studio. Hopefully that helps anyone who is in the market for a new phone. More dessert for less money? That's the topic for today's cooking segment. Here's Mario Ramos with a special treat. What's the scoop, Mario? Hey, what's going on guys? Tonight I got a special treat for you. Today we're at Walmart, about to get these ingredients we need for our next topic. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys. Today we'll be making banana splits. As you can see we have all the ingredients we need for this. With that being said, let's get started. Before preparing any type of food, it's always important to wash your hands. Just as our hands, it's always important to wash out our food before we eat it. Begin to slice up your strawberries and your bananas. Next, we're going to want to add in our scoops of ice cream. Remember guys, moderation is the key. Up next, we're going to want to add in all the strawberries and bananas that we've chopped up. Now, top it off with your favorite syrup. For this purpose, I chose now that's a story I can really sink my teeth into. What a great and affordable treat to create with friends and family. Looks like I know what I'm going to make this weekend. I hope you guys enjoy the show today. I'm Alejandra. And I'm Joey. Till next time, this is EPCC News.